Hello, and uh, welcome to Finland Mennonite Church. Uh, we are coming to the end of a series of messages that we have entitled Kingdom Apprentices. And uh, we have seen that all followers of Jesus are called to be apprentices and to put into practice, as the Apostle Paul writes in Philippians 4, 9, that uh, what we have learned and received and heard and seen he says, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Well, over these weeks, we have learned, uh, we've talked about what it is to learn and receive and hear. And in this final message of this series, we will focus on seeing, seeing as an apprentice. Now, if, if you have learned a trade or if you are simply very handy and able to fix things around the house or are you able to work on your own car or truck? Or if you learned the skills of your current profession you're in, or if you've learned how to, how to accomplish a hobby that you love, I'm pretty sure that you learned, you learned what to do by watching someone else do it for you. I, I grew up in a home where um, my dad didn't do, uh, the work on our family cars. Uh, we had a neighbor who lived next door who owned a car dealership and he was a good friend. And so whenever dad had something needed to be taken care of on the car, he would have our neighbor take it to his shop and he would he would fix it. So in, in my adult life, I, uh, I've i never worked on our cars. I, I like to say there are two things I'm not, both of which are a mechanic. But I've tried over the years to sort of save some money and. Uh, and try to um, to do some of the little light repairs on our cars. And now, in fact, you know, it's getting even easier. Uh, it's getting easier if you're watching one of these YouTube videos. You know, you can find a YouTube video to fix almost anything. I just wonder how many of you have have learned to do something or fix something or make something by watching a YouTube video. Well, recently we uh, broke the uh, taillight on our Kia minivan. And I thought, I looked at it, I said, you know what? I don't think I can fix that. I think we're going to have to take that to the shop to get it repaired. But then I, I dialed up a YouTube video for a driver's side taillight replacement on a 2016 Kia Sedona. And amazingly, amazingly, what popped up was this guy who became like my best friend. And I watched him as he step by step showed me how to replace the taillight in our minivan. And I looked at it, I said, hey, if he can do it, I think maybe I can do it. So I went ahead and, and ordered the part and, and, um, and then got the video out again and took it out to the car and had it sitting there. And I watched him show me how to replace this broken rear taillight. And you can ask my wife, Lydia, when I was done and it was fixed, I felt like I had just performed open heart surgery. I mean, the key, though, was I was able to see someone do it. And then after seeing them do it, I could try it myself. I believe that is one of the ways we become apprentices of Jesus. By seeing. We see others doing it. We see how others are following Jesus faithfully in their life. And then we follow. That's what Paul said in Philippians chapter 4. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Now the assumption in that verse was that Paul was listening to God and hearing God tell him what to do, so as he did it, others watched him do it as well. Last Sunday, 
we had a get acquainted time for the adult prayer partners who have agreed to be prayer partners for our current sixth grade students. And they're going to pray for them as they go through the, the tough middle school years of life. Important time to have people praying for our youth at this time. And one of the questions, uh, sort of to get acquainted, as they talked to each other was the question, who taught you how to pray? How did you learn to pray to God? Most of us, maybe if not all of us, have at some point seen someone else pray or heard them pray, either a parent, a grandparent, a friend, a, a pastor, who then helped you in some way to learn to pray and how to be in communication with God as you follow Jesus. Who taught you to pray? How did you learn to pray to God? In my life as a as a youth and a young apprentice of Jesus, it was my father and mother who I heard and I saw saw them following Jesus. This is a picture of my mom. She went home to be with the Lord five years ago. And this was taken about eight years ago at a, at a baby shower. And you can see my mom there. She, um, she was given the task, as all who were there, given the task to, to, um, to write some words of wisdom for our then pregnant daughter, Mary, who was going to be giving birth. In a, in a few months. And this was the wisdom that came from my mom. And this is what it said. Maybe you can't read it. It says, don't give up. Things will get better. Keep praying. Don't give up. Things will get better. Keep praying. She knew what the stresses of a young mom would be. She could remember that. But for my mom and dad, prayer was important, and I watched them pray. Uh, who taught you to pray? And maybe the question is, who are you apprenticing as you communicate with God? You know, later on in my life with Christian friends, I saw them praying, and in their praying, they modeled before me a love and devotion to Jesus and a desire to be in communication with God. And so I watched, and I learned that I could talk with God. I began to see God's love and God's purposes for my life and his calling for me. I saw it unfold as I followed Jesus as, a, as an apprentice in his kingdom. Well, during these weeks of, of talking about being kingdom apprentices, we've been, been reading and, and diving into the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Colossae. And I'd like to have us return there again for this final message of of seeing as an apprentice and 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 to read Colossians chapter 4 the the wisdom that that Paul gives that God has inspired him to give on how we see as apprentices of Jesus so if you have your bibles go ahead and turn to Colossians chapter 4 we'll be reading verses 2 through the end of the chapter Paul writes continue steadfastly in prayer being watchful in it with thanksgiving at the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Tychicus will tell you all about my activities. He's a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. And with him, Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they will tell you of everything that has taken place here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning you whom you have received instructions, if he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice, 
These are the only men of the circumcision among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea and in Heropolis. Luke, the beloved physician, greets you, as does Demas. Give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and see that you also read the letter from Laodicea, and say to Acrippus, see that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. This is the word of the Lord for us today. And may the Holy Spirit teach us what it means for us today. We're going to focus for the, the time we have remaining here on verses 2 through 6. But to let you know that the Dig Deeper sheet, the, we'll take a closer look at verses 7 through 18. And there in particular, look at the lives of the Apostle Paul's apprentices, the numerous ones he mentions, and how they're, they were seeing, seeing with their eyes as apprentices of Jesus. So the question I want to ask us as we look at these verses is, how do we see as apprentices? What is what does Paul show us in, the, in his sort of YouTube video of words that help us to understand what it means to see as apprentices? And we'll look again at verse 2 to begin with. He says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. The key word there is watchful, and it means to be awake, to be attentive to. Uh, to be attentive to what God is doing. It was a word that was also used when Jesus, Jesus took uh, Peter, James, and John up on the mountain to pray with him. And it's recorded in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, and, he, and Luke says, as Jesus is, is on the mountain praying, his face is transformed and his, and his clothes and his appearance become as it's, as it's spoken of, the dazzling white. Uh, it's called the, the transfiguration, if you remember this. And suddenly, Moses and Elijah are there talking with Jesus. It's just this amazing, miraculous, sort of open heaven appearance. A, a miraculous event. But Luke records for us what's happening with Peter, James, and John. This is what it says about them in Luke chapter 9, verse 32. This is what Luke records. He says, now Peter and those who were with him, James and John, were heavy with sleep. Have you ever been heavy with sleep, especially when you've been trying to pray? I know I have. Heavy with prayer. Heavy with sleep in the midst of supposedly waiting to prayer. But then he says, but when they became fully awake, another way to say that, when they became watchful, that's the word, when they became watchful, able to see as an apprentice, it says they saw his glory. You know, they were heavy with sleep. They weren't, they weren't being vigilant or attentive to what God was doing what God was wanting to show them with his son, Jesus, on the mountain. But then something changed. It says they were able to see. They became watchful, fully awake to what God was doing, and they saw the glory of God. As apprentices of Jesus, they were with him. And then they began to see what he was about. You know, in Jesus' time, an apprentice of a rabbi was a pretty important thing. I mean, central to the life in the Jewish community was educating their children 
in in the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures, usually from age five to ten, good Jewish boys would sit with a rabbi, and you know what they do? They would memorize the Torah, the Old Testament. The goal was to be able to recite Genesis through Deuteronomy by heart by the age of 10. But by the age of 14, the best of the best would be invited to continue studying with the rabbi, learning how to apply God's word, both the oral and written law. And the best of these would go through even more intense training and perhaps for a very few be invited to become an apprentice, a rabbi in training. And that would require them leaving everything so that their whole life would be devoted to becoming like the rabbi. And you know, those who didn't make the cut, who didn't have what it takes to become like the rabbi, you know what they were told? <laughs> they were go, told to go and find a trade, make babies, and pray that they become rabbis, those sons. Well, when Jesus called his 12 disciples, those 12 disciples were young men working at their trades. He was calling those Jewish men who didn't make the cut. Jesus was calling young men who had been judged unfit to be apprentices of a rabbi, and he called them to be his apprentices, to enter into an intense three-year apprenticeship. And with Jesus, they would see and learn to live out the scriptures, how to live in the kingdom. And isn't it amazing that Jesus chose rejects as his apprentices? He chose rejects as his apprentices. After Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension into heaven, his apprentices were commissioned to go and make apprentices of Jesus, make other apprentices of Jesus. In fact, Acts 4.13 says it this way, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. So the Apostle Paul now is writing this letter to the Colossians, reminding us how we see as apprentices of Jesus, what's most important is being with Jesus and being watchful. Being watchful. Two things we must do to watch and to see as apprentices of Jesus. First, we are to be present with God through prayer. He says, continue steadfastly in prayer. We spend time with God. You know, prayer isn't just something we do at, at dinner time or at bedtime. As important as those times are to pray, it means to pray, first of all, continuously. We spend time with God continuously. The word continue, or as it's translated devote in the New International Version, in the, in the original language of the New Testament, is, an, is written in the imperative form. That means it isn't optional. When he says continue in prayer, it's not optional. As, a, as an apprentice of Jesus who desires to see as an apprentice of Jesus, we need to spend time with God continuously. Because the word is also in the present tense. It means it's an ongoing activity. When Paul was writing later to the church in Ephesus, he said we're to pray without ceasing which means we're to pray at all times. We're to pray with our eyes open and with our eyes closed. We're, to, we're basically, he's saying, to live in a relationship with God where we are continually in communication with God. I love this about God. 
He loves us so much. He wants to interact with us. He wants to, to live in us. And he wants to work through us. And to watch, we must first spend time with God continuously. And then we are to be present with God steadfastly is the word. The word means to be persevering. In other words, not giving up. And Jesus told this, this beautiful parable of the persistent widow. And if you remember the story, she comes, this widow, to a, to a mean, unjust judge. And she's crying out for justice to him. And she just keeps coming out. She doesn't relent. And, he, and it says that because of her persistence in coming to this judge, time after time, he gives her justice. And Luke tells us at the beginning of that parable why Jesus told that story. He said, so that as apprentices, his followers would, here it is, always pray. Always pray and not lose heart. In other words, we would begin to see and watch by being present with God continuously and steadfastly, persistently in prayer. Secondly, though, we watch and see as apprentices by being alert to see what God is doing. He says in verse 2, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it, being watchful in it, being awake. For what? Well, what are we to be awake for? What are we to be watchful for? Well, Paul says two things that we are to be alert to. First of all, we're to be alert to what he calls open doors. Pray for us for open doors, for doing God's work in the world. Verse 3 he says, pray that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of God. Now, that mystery of God is a technical term for the message of God's saving purpose in Christ. He came to seek and to save you and me, the lost, and the lost of the world. The mystery was that this, this salvation was for Jews and Gentiles alike. It was for all who will come. It was for all. And Paul says, pray and be alert for open doors. For open doors. To be watchful what God is doing as he opens doors for us to, to declare by our lives, by our actions, by our speech, the gospel of Jesus. Well, let me ask the question, who are the people, the neighbors, the co-workers, the friends at school or at the gym, who God may be opening up for you and for me to show and to share the message of Jesus? I have this prayer that I purposely pray almost every day. I pray as I go forth into this day, Jesus, help me to give myself away to others being kind to everyone I meet. Holy Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. And as I pray that prayer, I, I, I sit quietly then for a time and just see who God places on my mind or heart to pray for. Or maybe even to go and see. Or maybe to reach out with a... Uh, with a text or an email or with a visit. You see, Paul is saying we need to be alert to what God is up to. Be watchful by praying and by looking for open doors. And to basically watch for where God is, is working and then join him. Watch for open doors and opportunities to share God's love. How does the kingdom come? How is his will done yet through you and through me who, who are seeing and watching and seeing how Jesus did it, watching the Jesus YouTube video, and then going and joining God in that work. We need to be alert to those open doors, those opportunities. And secondly, he says, be alert to as to how you live before outsiders. Walk in wisdom, he says, verse 5, 
toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. He says very clearly three things. He says, watch how you live in wisdom, making the best use of the time. The New International says, making the most of opportunities. Watch how you live in wisdom. Watch how you speak, he says, with grace. Because people are not only watching how we live, but they're also listening to how we speak. Maybe more importantly, they're listening to how we speak. If we are to be alert to what God is wanting to do in the relationships we have with outsiders, we need to, to watch how we speak to them. Paul says, let that speech always be gracious. Gracious, seasoned with salt. And salt was a preservative. Salt was a seasoning. Made something taste better. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. And then thirdly, he says, watch how you answer with wisdom and giving each person an appropriate answer. Know how you ought to answer each person. Listen, pray to God. Say, God, how am I to answer this person? I often say, if somebody has a question about your faith or about God, say, that's a good question. If you don't immediately have an answer, say, how about if we look together to see if we can find that answer? Watch how you answer. I have this picture on my wall, on the wall in my office, reminding me how, how to watch how I live, how I speak, how I answer outsiders. And the question I ask myself as I read this, do I live in such a way that draws people to Christ rather than pushes them away? Do I live and speak and answer in such a way that draws people to Christ rather than pushes them away? Because God invites us in his love and in his kindness to us. He invites us to watch and see what he is doing. And he invites us then to join with him as we apprentice in his kingdom. And we do this by being present with God in prayer, continuously and devotedly. And then by being alert to what he's doing, looking for those open doors and opportunities and being watchful and prayerful for outsiders. This past Monday night uh, at the Leadership Council meeting, at the start of the meeting, we went around the table and shared the first name of an outsider we had on our hearts to pray for and to ask God to draw them to faith in Christ. And then uh, Pastor Chris invited us just to pray for them out loud. Uh, all 13 plus of us around that table were praying for someone in our life who was an outsider who we longed to see them come to faith in Christ. And it was like God was just moving in our hearts as we spent that time praying. God wants us to see, to see as apprentices. To see by watching others who are faithfully following Christ. But to also, even more importantly, see by being in a relationship with God and, and listening and seeing and praying and then being alert to what God is doing in the lives of those around you. Here's a couple of questions to reflect on as we go. What open doors do you see before you today? Maybe even as we've been looking at the scriptures in Colossians 4, something prompted, the Spirit moved and prompted you with a thought. What open doors do you see before you today? And maybe even more, who are the outsiders God has put in your life? Remember, it's always God who has to move in their life, but 
Paul reminds us as he was writing to the church in Corinth, he said, it's the one who plants, that's nothing, neither the one who waters, but God that gives the increase, but he still needs people who plant and water that seed. And so as a kingdom apprentice, may you and I see with kingdom eyes what God is doing in, in us and around us today. And may we watch for open doors and keep a, a keen eye for the outsiders God is bringing across our paths. And may we be with Jesus continuously and devotedly in prayer so that his Holy Spirit and so his great love permeates our lives in such a way that others see and are drawn to Jesus. May it be so. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have shown us in these weeks of your desire for us to be learning, receiving, hearing, and seeing as your apprentices. May your Holy Spirit fill us as we invite you to further open our eyes so we may be able to see what you're doing in and around us. Like your early apprentices, Jesus, we too are ordinary men and women with sincere desires to see you and follow you through the open doors to the outsiders who need your love. And so, Father, as we go this week, may those around us recognize us as those who have been with Jesus. And may your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Well, it's been good to be together with you today. Um, and I trust that as we've been in the book of Colossians, you've been blessed and encouraged by these words. For our closing benediction, I want to just share these words from Colossians chapter 3. And above all these, put on, bind, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called to one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. God bless you, and may you now go to love and serve the Lord.